well, thank you all for being here today. Um, and sorry for being jumping in the meeting right now. I have been in the field since early morning, but let's talk a little bit about food safety and water quality for blueberries specifically. And in, I would say in general for fruits and vegetables, uh, the standards and regulations are fall within the same um, recommendation. But why it is important to focus on water? You know, why we, we need to talk about water that is used for production uh, during harvesting and during post-harvest. Post uh, water is the major contributor to fresh produce contaminate, contamination and many other previous uh, outbreaks that were linked to fresh produce contamination. The source was water that was used in the field. So a lot of times uh, surface water that is being used to irrigate or for any other activity in the field, it has been associated with big outbreaks that happened in the past and not only outbreaks, but also recalls. So when you hear about some uh, fresh produce recall and, and that is they identify probably some issues on the farm, they tested the water, they tested, uh, they done some environmental testing and they found that eventually the water or something else was contaminated. So before something, uh, people start getting sick, they recall the product. So, and then many times water were, was associated and was the biggest issue. And, and as, as, been, as I've been saying, contamination from human and animal feces are the most common sources of contamination in the water, the biggest problem. Uh, in the um, right hand picture, you can see that this is an irrigation pond, that there is a family ne living nearby uh, the pond. And most of the time we found levels of E. coli pretty high after rainfall events, uh, which, you know, it could be, uh, related to, you know, human waste being dumped or runoff coming to the water. And then the other side, you see, like, if you have a pond full of cows, you don't use that to irrigate fresh produce, right? Because they, they're definitely a big issue, especially with E. coli when you, you have uh, livestock or poultry related to salmonella to you. So it, it is a big issue. And we know sometimes it's hard to control animals, but we, we tell growers, uh, keep in mind that fruits and vegetables are ready to eat food, you know, and they're more, mostly not cooked. In this case, we were talking about blueberries this week and you all eat raw blueberries, you know, you don't, unless you do a blueberry cobbler pie or, you know, jams and jellies, uh, most of the times you, you eat it raw. So we need to pay attention when you're talking about water that you're using for production. And, and according to the FISMA produce safety rule, which is the prevailing uh, FDA regulation for foods and vegetables, uh, agricultural water in general must be safe and adequate sanitary quality for its intended use. So this is a general concept uh, so before you going towards the, you know, dip and the regulation and 30 buyers requirement and then certification um, companies, uh, water must be safe and water must be uh, sanitary quality when you're using in fresh produce, produce production. And, and what kind of water, when we talk about agricultural water, what water is qualified to be called agricultural water according to the regulation? It's water that is intended or is likely to contact the edible portion of the produce or food contact surfaces that would directly come in contact with produce. So we are talking about overhead or sprinkler irrigation. It would definitely be considered agricultural water because you're, over, you're spraying 
directly water into the produce when you're talking about blueberries. But when you're talking about uh, drip irrigation or even under plastic irrigation, if you're using plastic, uh, then you have to evaluate the risks. You know, it is not directly contacting the edible portion of the crop, it's not contacting the, the fruits that are on the bushes, but uh, you have to think about how often do you have problems with your system? Do you have, uh, you know, the drip tape often uh, breaking or, you know, you have sometimes rodents eating on them and they're splashing over there. So if you, if you feel, if you can confidently say, you know what, this water never touched the harvestable portion of the crop, it never touched the fruit. So it's not agricultural water. And then you, know, you don't have to follow the produce safety requirements or even, you know, requirements for, um, that is covered under the regulation. So, because it's not agricultural water, it's not touching the fruits. But we are talking about irrigation water, right? Uh, we are talking about drip irrigation, if you think about it, uh, it is safe, you know, it is compared to overhead irrigation. It's the safest method of water application, but, Agriculture water, water is not only used for irrigation. Think about water that you use for frost protection. Think about the water that you use for fertigation or think, think about the water that you use for cleaning and sanitizing harvest beans or facility or equipment. Water that is used for hand washing or workers hand washing. And then they, when they're, whenever they're in the field, sometimes they have to wash their hands and they sometimes they have to use the bathroom. So all this water that is used in the product, during production, during harvesting or during post harvest, they are considered, they are called agricultural water because they're touching or likely touch the harvestable portion of the crop or food contact surface, which are harvest bean, harvest equipment, uh, post harvest equipment as well. So workers hand. So all of this are food contact surfaces or we're using water for, for irrigation, for not only for irrigation, but for frost protection, fertigation and so on. So you don't think about only water that is used for irrigation that is on the drip drip tape and it's it's safe you don't have to worry about the water quality if you're using the same water uh, let's say from the pond from the creek and to irrigate but you're also using for fertigation uh, frost protection or washing your beans or even a well water you have to follow some the recommendations or the requirements for the water quality that you're using in this case and I've been talking about a lot about water sources, you know, if you're using creek or if you're using wells, and they determine your risk. So we have surface water, which is our higher risk uh, because it's open to the environment. It's, it's hard to control what is in and out and it run off during heavy periods of rain. And animals, sometimes they come in and whoever, whatever else that comes in the water that contaminate the water, so it is open to the environment. It's hard to control the quality of the water. And groundwater, well water is between high and low and it's medium level uh, risk. Uh, because if you have a, uh, a ma well-maintained groundwater or you well, uh, you will not likely have problems, but sometimes you, you do everything you, you possibly can do and you still, uh, you have problems in the water table. You have problems on the on your water itself that is in the area. So also you have to think about all those things. And municipal water is the safest source. You know, it's treated water. Is it falls within the drinking water standards. So it is considered the safest. But if if you have a big area, if you're producing a lot. Think about it, it's, it's very expensive to use municipal water. So a lot of growers, they are falling to the groundwater, surface water. And yes, for production, they can, all the three sources, water sources can be used. For harvesting and post-harvest, only groundwater and municipal water can be used because of the high risk of surface water. 
And if you think about a farm environment, especially here in Alabama, we have a lot of uh, diversified farms. We have poultry operations. We have wild animals. We have, uh, you know, livestock or wild animals. Well, sometimes you grow row crops and you grow produce and you, you water, you use water that is from a creek that comes up on the hill. So you have a, a complex system and it is hard to control everything. So if you're using surface water, of course it is the higher risk resource. Uh, but I mean, it doesn't mean that you cannot use it, but it, it needs to pay more attention and then be monitoring the quality of the water that you're using, especially during uh, your growing season and especially during close to the harvesting point. And I've been talking a lot about the produce safety rule, you know, and the requirements for water. So I, I mentioned at the beginning that the water must be in the in the big umbrella must to be safe and and then for sanitary quality for adequate use. Uh, but when you fall into the requirements, specific requirements, the produce safety rule will establish values and standards that need to be, you know necessary to meet the safe water use. So when we are talking about pre-harvest water, the produce safety rule we started with the geometric mean of 120 six CFU per, per sample and, and a standard uh, threshold value uh, of 410. And, and, and there was to build a microbial water quality profile over a period of time, two to four years. And, and that there, there was only requirement, I mean, for pre-harvest water. And then a lot of times, you know, as I said, surface water is hard to control the quality. Today, it could be one thing and tomorrow it could be another thing. And then the whole environment plays a role on dictating the safety and the quality of the water. So after that, uh, the FDA revised the rule and now they, come up with a new proposed rule for agricultural water, which is for pre-harvest water. And for harvest and post-harvest water, the standards are different from the pre-harvest. So for water that you use during harvesting or you know, uh, hand washing, or if you need to use water during the harvest or water that, it, that you, if you need to use water during post-harvest, I mean, for blueberries, you normally don't wash blueberries, you know, it's a dry line, but you, you use water to clean your facility, you know, so that is the water that needs to have no detectable generic E. coli that in the bottom of the water that you're testing. And I'm talking about the regulation, you know, sometimes you don't follow the regulation, but you sell to wholesales, you, you, you sell to places that require certification and gap certification or other kind of certifications. When you're talking about that, those certifications, they normally fall within the regulation. You know, they will, normally will ask at least what the regulation is asking, and then sometimes a little bit more. Um, so you need to know, you know, you need to have an understanding and a concept of what the produce safety rule is requiring, even if you don't fall within the, the rule, but you still sell and you still need gap certification or you know food safety certification on your farm and i mentioned that they proposed the fda proposed a new ag rule and but what is new you know what has changed um, they are coming up with a water assessment and it is only for pre-harvest water so there's no chance to harvest and post-harvest water requirements or sprouts so it's still the same. You need to do the water testing and then everything that it's on the regulation, zero generic apply and so on. And so with the new assessment, water assessment for pre-harvest water for production water, it also requires a new documentation that is these water assessment um, records. And in the new option is that the water assessment is based on, on the inspection, maintenance, and much more of your water source. And this new option replaces the testing on the produce safety rule. So before I talked about 126, 410 and microbial water quality profile that you, do, you, you had to do five sampling waters, water testing per year, 
and take the average and put on a spreadsheet. So they're replacing all of this to this water assessment. So it's water testing is not necessarily a requirement right now, but it's an option. And, but keep in mind, if you're still GAP certification, you need GAP certified, uh, they might still require the water testing because as I said, the water regulation uh, portion is proposed, is still not finalized. And January this year, the FDA reminds produce stakeholders that, that they are putting enforcement discretion for compliance dates. So by now, according to the old rule, the, the finalized rule before, growers should have been inspected for the water. But for now, since the new proposed water, they are, uh, you know, they're enforcing discretion uh, over this uh, compliance because it is still proposed. They still need to finalize based on the comments and based more on, on feedback they will receive with the proposed rules. And let's go deep a little bit and on what is this water assessment? What, it, what, it's, what is contained the, the new documentation that you have to keep on your farm right now? So it involves few factors. So the first one, it's the agriculture water system. And it's a water system, whether you use surface water, groundwater, or municipal water. So you need to put on your records uh, the location and what kind of water source you're using and what kind of distribution center you're using, uh, whether you're using well-fed pond or if you're using, you know, open pond, you know, or if you're using just groundwater, uh, how much the, the system is protected from other uses systems or from animals, you know, if you're using surface water, uh, do you have a vegetation buff around, a buffer around the, the, the water source that protects from, you know, cows or chickens or even wild animals coming to the water? Uh, you know, how much water uh, animal activity you have around? Also, you have to grow, you need to uh, put on their report adjacent and nearby land use related to animal operations. So maybe you don't have animals, animals on your livestock on your farm, but your, your neighbor, you know, two, three miles, four miles away, they have a big uh, poultry operation. You have to put that on your records too. And then the other factor you have to document agricultural water practices. What kind of application method they're using? I said overhead application, it's, uh, it's riskier than, and then you're using drip irrigation, but depends on the crop that you're using. So you have also have to document what kind of crop you are growing, what kind of commodities you have in your farm and what kind of application method you're using for each one of them. And uh, when was the last time that you irrigated prior to harvesting. So you have to normally put, you know, if you irrigate a day before harvesting, you irrigate a week before harvesting, and you have to document that as well. And environmental conditions on the area that you grow produce, you know, do you have frequent heavy rains? Do you, do you often have uh, runoff Are you using surface water? How much runoff do you see coming into the, to the water source? and air temperature, you know, within the seasons when you're growing produce, how much sun exposure you have. They say that because for us, you say how much sun exposure, that's weird. But think about growers that grow produce in New York, you know, they have way less sun exposure than we have here in the South, uh, which can also help kill pathogens that are in, in the surface of produce and soil or even in the water. Uh, and other, relevance factors that could contribute to your reporting, you know, and that includes water testing. Water testing in this case is switched to the requirements for an option. It is an additional documentation that if you're uh, doing your water assessment and then you were also adding the water testing and then showing that your water is safe based also on your other, other uh, inspections and auto documentation, you're just adding another um, thing to your report, which is 
my opinion is very important, especially during your growing season. It is important to know what is the quality of the water that you're using. You know, you're not guessing based on your, you know, uh, assessment. And you're not required to do all of this if you can demonstrate using a water testing uh, that is outlined in the produce safety rule that the water has zero detectable generic or coli. Let's say if you're using municipal water or if you use a groundwater that you constantly test and you haven't you have shown that there is no generic E. coli in that water, you don't need to do all this water assessment, everything I just talked about. Or if you're using, using public water to, you know, for all the pre-harvest uh, activities, irrigation, frost protection, fumigation, and then you have the certificate from the water supply, and then you don't have to do anything, the water assessment. Or if you're treating, your water, you know, if you're using groundwater, you're treating with chlorine or any other chemical uh, that is in accordance with the produce safety rule. You have to use EPA sanitizer, but you have to keep in mind if you're using water treatment, it's not like you're shocking your water and that's it. No, it, it has a, a method of validation, verification, and monitoring of treatment. It's not a simple uh, way of coming there, you found microbial. Um, my, microbes in the water, you tested for E. coli, it was high, and then you to treat your water. It's not just coming at and shocking the water. It is, it's, it's a more detailed and a complicated process. But if you can't do that, then you don't, no, you don't have to do uh, the water assessment. If you're not doing any of these three, then you, you, you are required to do the water assessment if you fall under the produce safety rule. But it's still, keep in mind, the rule is being proposed, is not finalized yet. So things can change when it's finalized. And for post-harvest water, uh, it remains the same. Keep in mind, all of this water assessment, it changes in the proposed water. Nothing has changed for post-harvest water. So according to the produce safety rule, you have to do water testing for groundwater, uh, and then the water must be come with no detectable generic E. coli for testing and that contacts the edible portion of the crop or if you're using the water for cleaning and sanitizing tools, equipment, and, and you're not likely to use water during production, you know, during processing, sorting and packing for your, for your line. But if you have clean out, clean out place, uh, packing line, that you can disassemble equipment and take it out to wash and dry and come and put it back, then that water must be fall into these uh, requirements. If you're having a gap certification, you also need to do the water testing or keep documentation for municipal water. And in case if you're using water, uh, you need to keep records on temperature, water, uh, what kind of uh, antimicrobial you're using, sanitizer, schedule changes in treatment and then and, and all monitoring and everything else. And with the new proposed rule, and the FDA has suggested that if you find after your water assessment and you found that you have high risk of having contamination on your water, then you they suggest some mitigation strategies that you can do. Maybe you need to change or repair or application, change your application methods or repair your well cap, your well head. Uh, it's been you know, too old and then you need to do some improvements or change the application method. And in case if you're doing drip tape, that it's fine. But if you're doing overhead or splinter irrigation or bushes, then you might consider shift into drip tape. Or if you are using the same water that is high risk for frost protection, maybe you might considering using another source of water for frost protection. You know, if you even if you if you're considering that the drip tape water is not ag water, then you need to use other water to for frost protection or fertigate or you know up fertilizer application. Uh, maybe you need to increase time interval between water application and harvest, you know, like a minimum of four days to count for die off of microbes. So 
for four days, we should have a 99% of microbes dying eventually, you know, in the out in the environment with the heat, with sun exposure and everything. Uh, if you continue having problems and you can do water treatment, you know, and there are a lot of people that can help you if you wanna introduce a water treatment to your system, whether chlorine or UV or PA or any other kind of treatment system. Uh, we can reach out to one of our uh, extension people. We have people around that can help you on implementing on, on and then putting up a uh, water treatment for you. And in any other alternative that you find that's valuable and you need a scientific based, uh, it needs to be scientifically based uh, so you can apply any other method that you were, you know, you come up with and say, well, I found something that it's, uh, uh, that can help me mitigate risks. And don't forget records, you know, and records, all of your water testing that you're doing, even though they're not for production water, they're not required anymore, then if you do, keep on the records. Uh, and if you're doing any water treatment or monitoring, keep them on records. And now with the new water, uh, ag water rule, then you might, you have to keep the water uh, assessment on the record to you, this assessment document and any corrective action or mitigation strategies that you have planned uh, or if you had any issues that you have to take corrective actions, keep all documented on, on, on your farm. And then last slide, I just want to talk a little bit about a program that we just, uh, we launched this year. And with all the things that is happening with agriculture water, with all the change that being, that's been happening, we understand that growers will face difficulties, you know, adapting to the new uh, requirements. And then sometimes growers find difficulties finding labs that they can send water for testing. So we have this program that is called Ag Water Safety Program that is aligned with the current produce safety uh, ag rule, proposed rule that we, our major focus is product, provide educational support to all growers that they can navigate through these new requirements. And also we are offering free microbial water testing. So if you're interested on in participating on this program, you can access this link that we have here, or you can use your cell phone camera and scan the QR code and click on the link that we generate on your camera. It will take you to a screening survey. Uh, there you can provide some basic information, you know, if you're using water, if you have produce on your, on your farm, and then you leave your contact information and it will, will reach out to you to provide more information and to send uh, the cooler with the bottles and then all everything that you need to do to collect your water and send back to us so we can do the water analysis for you. And it is free, you don't pay for shipping, we pay for all of this and it, you, you get a lot of benefits because we get to help you to understand all of the new requirements and then uh, we provide, the major reason is to provide education and help you uh, on your farm as well. And I'm open for questions and uh, I hope you guys enjoy and I haven't talked too fast. <laughs>